Last month, I did a video on the Hezbollah electronics explosions, particularly focusing on the radios, uh, an ICOM ICV-82, at least that was the claim. And I was interested to see on the internet that you can still buy these. Now, ICOM has stated multiple times uh, that these radios are no longer in production. They're not available for purchase, at least ones made by ICOM. Yet, these listings exist on eBay as well as over on AliExpress, which you can you can see here. Now, dubious notes on quality. I, I did zoom in on this, and you can see on the plastic, this is a little rough, particularly that VHF transceiver, the the painting on top, the I, look at the 82 looks kind of messed up. And then obviously no ICOM logo on the top. And we know that exists because if you go to Universal Radio, which is a fantastic little website for looking up old radio type stuff, uh, mentions discontinued there on the top, but also you can see the little ICOM. Unfortunately, I can't zoom in much further than that. So my curiosity is, is how close of a clone these radios are to the original V82. And unfortunately, I, I don't have a real V82 because I believe what I have is, in fact, a clone. And I, I bought two of them. Already, just looking at the boxes, though, you can see they tried to copy these to the letter. You might be wondering, as I was too, why ICOM radios and why specifically this older radio being mass-produced, recreated as a clone, and going so far as to copy the boxes themselves. Well, it was something that Mike Glover mentioned when I interviewed him four years ago. When he was in the Special Forces, I saw an image of him dressed in kind of like Taliban-type gear when he was in Afghanistan, and there was an ICOM radio on his person. And, and I asked, you know, what was the deal with the ICOM radio? And he told me that, like, all radios for the the local people are ICOM radios. And that the term ICOM was the ubiquitous term for a radio. Think Kleenex, tissue, chapstick, right? That kind of thing. Let's take a look at these radios and see what's going on and how good of a clone they were. I, I did look at one of them and uh, there was a couple things that surprised me. Now, just screaming uh, <laughs> accuracy, they, they did use a similar box calling out Made in Japan and it's seen all over the place here. There was something that leaped out to me and it was this Chinese sticker. I don't know exactly what that means. I can have my wife try and decipher that as well as some of the stickers on the side. Again, it, it looks like a good copy of a radio, but let's open it up and see what we get. Wow, it's literally got the instruction manual. And this looks like a pretty dutiful recreation, at least a print job of the one that's available, still available on ICOM's website. We'll take a look at that here in a little bit. As well as a word from ICOM, they've had some updates since the September bombings. So we'll, we'll take a look at that as well for some of the quotes they have on news they've they've determined. Yeah, but you can see a pretty washed out print here. Yeah, okay. Operating instructions in addition. So that's, the I guess, the simple use case. I'm curious how common the firmware is. Do they actually go so far as to copy all the firmware? We'll take a look at that as well. I'm, I'm curious about that. There's your radio. And... What leapt out to me is ICOM, right on the top here. You can see that? Crazy. They included it right there. This does come with a drop-in charger as well, and it it's halfway decent. You can put either a battery in there, or you can take this out, and you can put the whole radio in, which it can be helpful if you've got backup. But they went so far as to copy everything, down to the charger. You can see that. That's Look at the ICOM, calling it the BC-186, made in Japan your plug which again even the even the iconography here on the little wall wart it has a clip and the antenna which yeah it's this coil bnc antenna very reminiscent of what we saw in the universal radio so let's take a look at this i'll lock this into place here like any of my radios let's get that plastic off of here couple of things around the back side here this switch is incredibly hard to to pull the battery out of i it took me a while to figure out how to do it, but you basically have to put it down on a table, slide the switch up, and then get underneath the battery. And I actually used a like an Allen key here and lifted it up that way. And then underneath, look what we got. No hologram. So if you remember, ICOM stated pretty emphatically that if it doesn't have the hologram of quality, that it's not a real ICOM radio. And we also posited that, you know, under this cover, which is the accessory cover, you'd put a D-Star module or, or something along those lines in here to, to add functionality to the radio. That was something that was done in the 90s 
for a lot of handheld radios, you could just add functionality in and somebody would pay extra for that because not all people needed that. So they kept the prices lower on the on the retail market. Let's take a look what's underneath this. Now, I, I did uh, uncase one of the radios. So this is a little bit loose here. You can see it's just connected to the speaker. We'll take a look a little bit deeper in that in a second. But I also took out the cover for the accessory port. And you can see there's no connector here. It's just the bare solder points. So while they went through the process of copying the PCB and everything along those lines, they did not include the connector, likely because they weren't going to support accessory modules or make those available. So this is it's, it's literally a clone across the board in all ways. Uh, but yeah, interesting, interesting design. Now, if you're if you're curious, wh where is space to potentially hide an explosive? Maybe underneath this circuit board. But if you're looking through the sides here, there's not a lot. There's other circuitry on the other side. So the only place that seems logical to me was this accessory port. That's right here. With a new battery in place, let's power this on. And it's listing 157.42 megahertz. MR is going to be your memories. So if I click that and I can go through some of the channels that are preloaded, I don't know that... There's nothing in particular here we're looking for. But uh, let's go back out of that, hit clear. And I can type in a frequency at this point. So I can go one, four. Whoa. Does it transmit anywhere? Let's get another radio to test this. So we have two radios here on the same frequencies. And, and yeah, they... Seems to be a bit of a squelch tail. Kilo India 6, November of it. Oh, this thing's loud. Um, it actually sounds pretty good, believe it or not, uh, on transmit. Here, check this out. Kilo, Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Test, test, test. It's, it's not bad. I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of curious how truthful or honest a clone it is to the point that it could be a fully backwards engineered ICOM radio. I don't know how that would have taken place, but there you go. Let's take a look through some of the features because frankly, I don't even know what this radio really does outside of it just being a traditional VHF radio for just doing uh, either memory mode or VFO frequency control. Just looking through this for capability settings, th this manual is a carbon copy of the online Japanese manual from the ICOM website. It is a, a printed copy. But I'm seeing all the same features in this device. So from my point of view, they're, they're, they're almost the same. This does advertise a 7-watt output, and so we are going to test that as well. So I have my Farzo meter here. Uh, no, it's 4.9 output, and this is in high power mode, and you do set that pretty easily. You hit the function button and then HML right here. So keep an eye right there, low medium, high. And we're looking at that power output right there, 4.9. A couple of things that feel odd to me are the, the plastic. I, I don't know how best to demonstrate that if you're not seeing it in person. But it's it feels cheap. I don't know how else to put it. It feels like Baofeng plastic, if that makes sense. It doesn't feel like a high-quality radio that you would have paid back in this time, you know, well over $100, $200 potentially for. It, I don't know, though. I don't know. I, I don't own one of these, uh, le the legit model, so I, I can't really tell you. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Post in the comments below if you're familiar with this radio and if this one is similar to the ones you've used in the past. Obviously, we, we know from ICOM that by not having the hologram, which, again, I'm going to need my, my special Allen key here to open this, but no no hologram, nothing along those lines, so this this qualifies as a as a clone, including uh, battery packs, all that stuff. And why don't we look at ICOM's statement on these radios and how to spot a fake. ICOM did determine after a bit of investigation that the radios that have exploded were not authorized devices by Lebanon's Ministry of Communications. Normally, we would only allow imports after type approval from the General Security Directorate and the Intelligence Directorate. They were not imported through a distributor either. So interesting. How did they get into the supply chain? We don't know that yet. 
The reason being that the model number of the radio involved is no longer being manufactured by the manufacturer, ICOM. We also know for certain that counterfeit radios of the same model are being imported from other countries. I'm assuming China. There is a growing concern that telephone and other devices may explode, which we have seen as well. Now, scrolling down here, regarding the radios that exploded, the only way to determine that the radio that exploded was not an ICOM product is to actually physically check one of the damaged devices. However, upon collation of multiple content of information that we have come to light so far, such as the fact that the radio did not have a hologram sticker as reported in the second update and the above comments, we believe the possibility that the radio that exploded was an ICOM product is extremely low. And they go into some detail about counterfeit products and how to determine if you have a counterfeit icon and a number of other things the fact though that some of these companies are going to such great lengths to make a clone of this quality from what i can tell it's identical in many cases including down to the operation of the radio they go on though if you go back up to the main page though strengthening measures against counterfeit products now, this is actually something that's existed for a while on the ICOM website, this link to genuine info. I'm not sure exactly when this was posted, but I believe years and years ago. And, and you can see they've, they've gone to some links to try and provide details on how to see if you have a quality ICOM product or not. They have QR codes on newer items, but if you keep scrolling down, the genuine ICOM label that is a hologram sticker not seen on these radios, which, you know, that it means, at least from, from ICOM's point of view, that this would be a cloned radio. And here's a number of examples of where those would be affixed on the radio, we assumed, on the back. Now, the page goes into a bit of detail here, talking about the three types of fake ICOMs. Type 1 is copies of produced radios that are that are in production. Then they have copies of discontinued models, which they're saying pretty much the fact that we're not making it anymore means they're 100% fake and then non icom models but with the icom logo so if it's just it's just got icom slapped on the side of it definitely not made by icom and again there's your there's your label of counterfeit fake radios versus uh the, the legit ones with the hologram and hey there's our icv82 we would expect to see that sticker to be on the actual radio but it is that's about all i have to add to this I, I like i said i wanted to see one of these radios for myself and i was i was glad that i got two of them because i could take one apart maybe we'll do something fun with them in the future post below what you'd like me to do with these radios as far as fuller fuller further testing i totally agree with icom that these aren't you know these radios were not made by them the the radios that it blew up in lebanon are not ICOM radios, although I think they were pretty close clones of the original ICV-82s. It's a horrible situation, uh, very interesting the way that, that all of this has gone down, and, and we haven't heard a lot more information on it, but I'm curious as actually what the explosive devices were and, and all that that goes into it. Don't know that we're ever going to find that out, but regardless, I hope that I shed a little bit more light onto the topic and uh, you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, and again, post your comments below. I would appreciate it. And if you haven't, please subscribe. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ73.